Have you ever been in a relationship where somebody deeply hurts you? It is something that's really, really upset you. And how'd that feel? In our text for today, we're going to get a feel for that as we are getting closer to Christmas here in the Christmas story and some of the things that went on behind the scenes leading up to Christmas and the faithfulness of a very dear person by the name of Joseph. And we're going to learn some things for a life that I truly believe are going to help us to have a much better life as we learn from his example. It comes from Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 and following. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and willing to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. So here's the situation. Joseph is in love with a woman named Mary. But he finds out that she's pregnant. Now imagine that hurt, because he knows he's not the one who made her pregnant. Maybe his mind is thinking she's been with another guy. Now the situation back then there was engagement and betrothal, and that was almost the same as a marriage, a one-year commitment. And the only way to break off a betrothal was through a divorce. But yet, he was a righteous man who wanted to divorce her quietly. But something is very clear here, a point that Matthew's making. Mary is pregnant, not as a result of another human being, as a result of the work of the Holy Spirit. This is significant. Who inspired the Bible? Who inspired the writers of Scripture to write what they wrote? It was the Holy Spirit inspired the Word of God. Who is it that leads us to faith in Jesus Christ? It's the Holy Spirit, as it says in 1 Corinthians 12, 3, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. And we see that the very conception of Jesus is a result of the work of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, allowing for Mary to have a child. And this child is not a normal child. This child is God in human form. And Joseph doesn't understand this at this time. But yet we see the kind of guy he is. Because he could come out publicly and say, you know what? My wife cheated on me. And they could drag her outside the city and stone her to death, but he loved her. He was deeply hurt. He's going to divorce her quietly. But what happens? We read on. But as he considered these things, and by the way, just imagine the pain, the hurt, the anguish in his heart. Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. And so he's going through this terrible situation. We're not sure how long this is going on. But I'll tell you what. When you're dealing with that kind of pain, the moments can seem like hours, and the days can seem like weeks or months. He's heartbroken. But then... In this dream, the Lord reveals to him the truth. The Lord reveals to him, yeah, that what is being conceived in Mary is of the Holy Spirit. Again, that emphasis, the Holy Spirit conceived in Mary to allow for her to give birth to Jesus. And that he's supposed to take her as his wife. And I don't know about you, but there's, you know, times you get dreams, you wake up and think, okay, was that real or was that, you know, fake or, you know, some of the dreams I have are very vivid. Some are really good, some are really bad. But yet, he knew this dream came from God. He knew what he was supposed to do. And I would, would imagine a bit of relief at this point, knowing, okay, it's not another guy. Well, it's the Holy Spirit. 
but God makes the situation work out. Just imagine if Mary would have gone to Joseph, hey, Joseph, you know what? I'm pregnant, but it wasn't you. It's the Holy Spirit. Um, that may not have gone well. But by God making the situation work out and coming in that dream, in fact, it's not the first time Joseph's going to have a dream. He's got many dreams where God's going to direct him on the path he's supposed to go. And every time Joseph gets one of these dreams, he responds. He hears and he acts. And that's the main theme I want to talk about today. Hearing from God and acting. And that's what Joseph is all about. In fact, you can search Scripture. Search all over Scripture and figure out how many words does Joseph speak in the Bible. And there's not a single word they ever spoke. But yet, his actions seem like he spoke volumes. The reality is, actions speak so much louder than words. And that's the kind of person Joseph is. And we see here at the end. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. And he took his wife and knew her not until she had given birth to a son. He called his name Jesus. He listens to a dream. He responds. He takes Mary as his wife. He's not going to be with her in a physical way until quite some time later because he knows what that's what he's supposed to do, to put that part of his life away for now. And imagine in that situation, the love they had, how difficult that must have been. But he listened to God. He listened to God and he acted. And here we are 2,000 years later thinking about this guy. And what is the lesson we learn from Joseph? Yes, yeah, sometimes life's going to be tough. Sometimes things are going to happen that are going to cause us great angst and hurt, pain, suffering. But God never gives up. God allowed him to go through that period of time. But then he caused a dream to come along to straighten him out and to get him to understand what's going on. Sometimes it's hard to understand why God does things the way he does, but he's a rally. We're not God. He is. He knows what he's doing. And so often through these difficult times, it makes us stronger. And what we see in Joseph is a person of great faith and character. He takes care of his his wife takes care of Jesus, listens, and he acts. Now, he had those dreams, and God directed him through the dreams. What about us? How does God direct us? Well, what we have is his word and his spirit. And God, through his word and spirit, has an incredible way to talk to us. In fact, every time we take out the Word of God and we read it, God speaks to us. And so often as we pray and meditate on the Word and think about what it's saying, things are going to come to mind. Things are going to come to heart. Actions are going to lead us forward. Because every one of us has a calling. And too many people are being too influenced by the world. Too many people are being distracted by the world. They're missing their calling. They're missing their direction. Joseph had a calling to be the stepfather of Jesus, to take care of Jesus, to make sure he wasn't going to be killed by Herod, to make sure that he'd be safely brought in this world, to make sure that Mary was taken care of. That's a pretty incredible calling because he could have been killed by Herod. And even that day in Bethlehem when he was born, imagine the challenging, difficult situation that they were in there. But yet, this child Jesus, Hebrew name Joshua, that the Lord saves, came into reality. And people around the story helped the whole situation take place. How? They listened and they acted. What is God calling you to do? Are you listening to him enough? Are you taking time to be in his word regularly? This word that became flesh. The Holy Spirit is the one that conceived Jesus. The Holy Spirit is the one who brought the Word of God into existence. The Holy Spirit is the one who's brought us into faith. The Holy Spirit is alive inside of us right now, and the Holy Spirit wants to guide us and direct us to listen and to act, not according to the ways of this world, but according to the ways of the Word and the Spirit. 
And then amazing things happen. Things that have eternal significance. Actions speak louder than words. This is so true in our lives of witnessing. In the world today, words are cheap. So often people say things they don't even mean. When, when people see actions of love and compassion, when people see that others truly care and love, they're no more apt to listen to what they have to say. And so as we listen and act and serve in a way like Joseph, to serve like Jesus, then we're people who are going to make a greater difference in this world to help make this world a better place. And to take some pressure off our lives of witnessing. It's not so often about what we say. It's about what we do. Here's Joseph. Not a single word spoken in Scripture he ever said. But his actions speak volumes. In closing, you know, I think about my father. A man, not of many words, but a man of action. A man that served in his church, he was a school teacher, sacrificed a lot for we as children, for my mom. He was always there, very quiet. Sometimes I wish he would talk more, but I look at his actions and I realize he was a man of God. And when he spoke, we listened. And the same was true about his father. Henry Bjorger. He was one of the most quiet men I've ever seen in my life. And we'd be at a family event with these huge family reunions. had a huge family. And all of a sudden, when Grandpa would start speaking, everybody shut up and would listen to what he had to say. I think Joseph was that kind of guy, too. Because he let his actions speak louder than words. And may God grant we learn that from this amazing man. It's an amazing example that Jesus has shown us in history. The one who was there when Jesus was born. And one day we get to see Jesus face to face. And one day we'll get a chance to meet Joseph too. But in the meantime, let's learn from his example. Actions speak louder than words. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the stories around the true Christmas story. People like Joseph. Amazing person he was guided by your spirit. He acted after he listened. He went through pain and suffering like we saw often do in our lives, but he never gave up. He didn't get bitter, he got better. Lord, help us to learn from his example to listen and to act and to let our actions speak louder than our words. Actions of love, joy, peace, forgiveness. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.